Hi, this is Brian Cantoni, and this is a quick video demo of some Vagrant templates I made for testing with Cassandra. So I created three different sets. The first is a single node where we'll take a look at installing Cassandra from a tarball and also the Ubuntu package. Second is a multi-node setup with Op Center and three Cassandra nodes. And finally, a multi-data center. So here on GitHub, under the B. Cantoni Vagrant Cassandra project, will be all the files that you need, and the base, the multi-node, and the multi-domain center, data center. So I've already set up this machine with the prerequisites, and we'll just take a quick look at those. So in the hosts file, I've added the private IP addresses for Cassandra and then all of the different node machines. I've also already installed Vagrant and VirtualBox. So we'll just double check that the versions line up and that they're reachable from the command line. So to get started, we're going to clone the Vagrant Cassandra repository. And we're going to start with the one.base, which is the first template. We can take a look at the Vagrant file here. And I'm not going to go into the details in this video, but you can take a look through it and see how we've configured everything. So in Vagrant, to bring up a new virtual machine, you just give the vagrant up command. The first time in particular that you run this, it's going to take a little while because it has to download the whole Linux image. So I've skipped ahead here. That took a few minutes to build. Vagrant status shows that it's running, so now I can do a vagrant SSH. And now I'm logged into my virtual machine. I've already installed Java so we're ready to go. Now we're going to copy the link to download the Apache Cassandra tar file. This is the first install method that we're going to walk through. So we're going to expand that, change into that directory. Now we need to make the lib and log directories. This is where the data and the log files for Cassandra are stored and make sure that I own those. Now starting Cassandra is simple as running bin Cassandra and it's actually going to start the service, a few log messages, and now we can run CQL SH which is the CQL shell and it's connected to our test cluster which is running locally. Now we can do things like creating a key space, and we can create a table within that key space. Then we can insert some sample data and we can do a select star like you might normally find in SQL land. And there we have it. There's also a tool called node tool which shows the status of our Cassandra cluster. We only have one server. And finally we'll kill the Cassandra daemon and I'm going to remove the old data. Now, we'll, let's walk through the Debian package install. So we need to set up the Datastacks repository per the instructions. Then we're going to do a sudo apt-get update to read in all of the packages that are delivered from Datastacks. Now we're going to do an apt-get install DSC20, which is the community edition of Datastacks. And this is going to install everything as a service. So if I do sudo service Cassandra status, we'll see that Cassandra is already running. I can do node tool status, and I'll see my one node cluster. And I can also run CQL shell like we did before.
Now it's installed all these utilities in the user bin path so they run directly. So there you have it. We've looked at the single node setup with the Cassandra Tarball and the Datastax Community Edition. And in other videos, we'll take a look at the other two. If you found this helpful, take a look at my website at cantoni.org or follow me on Twitter at bcantoni. Thanks.